In this week's episode, we learn how Gale plans to stop this supercharged Duramax-powered pickup truck. Banks built, protected by Amsoil, with support from Roadster Shop and Nitto. All right. Mike, Reggie, what's, what's up, What's happening, guys? Hey. Good to see you. How are you? Hey, Gail. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good, good. Good. good to see you, man. So, oh, hey. <laughs> you brought us Christmas, didn't you? We did. Oh, I love it. Yeah. I love it. I know, I know you guys have been chomping at the bit for this, but I think we've got everything ready for you. Well, going to have some work for you. I, think this is I just want to see the 15-inch rotors. I mean, that's... 15 and a half. Oh. <laughs> well, we want you to kind of watch us around and yeah, see what's going on with this thing, Gail. the speed. Right. Yeah. I know that you're going to make this thing go really fast, and it's going to put down a lot of power. Yeah. And I think we're going we're gonna to be able to stop it. Um, especially looking at like the spindles that Kibby made. Oh man, they're, they're beautiful. And I'm so That's glad our... that we did that. Yeah. Right? Yeah, absolutely. And I've told it's... so many people about, you know, the C5 platform, which was our pro spindle, but using the 2017 eight lug. Yes. It's legit. And, and it is a three quarter ton truck. Exactly. You know, so. No, I, th yeah. I think it's awesome, and I think the Roadster Shop chassis is beautiful. Those guys are, are real artists. Yeah. The design yeah. and the execution. Absolutely. Yeah. No, everything. And then, you know, Strange is one of our customers oh. from way back when. Yes. Bill Wood and, and Bob Stangy go way back to when we did, like, nothing but drag racing in the late 70s, early 80s. So working with them and making sure that that was correct with the eight lug and mm -hmm. full floater. One, one thing that I've really enjoyed watching all the episodes is it's, for me, learning stuff that's out of my range. Oh yeah, this is what life's all about. I really actually. like it. I love and it too. So since I'm, I'm here with you today, you know, I'd like you to kind of explain what we're looking at because we've got a couple diesel trucks that we use at work. Mm -hmm. We have a, 2011, 2500. Okay. Yeah. How much different is this? A lot. A lot. This is an L5P Duramax, so that's the base engine. A lot of what's on it is banks, uh, and when, when it's done, there'll be a lot more. But the L5P is a almost clean sheet engine. They, they assembled a, the engineering team at GM. They took the Zusu GM design and said, okay, what are we gonna do different here? It's still gonna have the same bore centers, but they, they increased the deck height. They changed the crankshaft to a real big pin crank. In other words, the mains are the same size, but the crank pins are huge. Now, what's the crank pin? Where you connect the rod bearing. Okay. Uh, so, and the rods, of course, uh, are so big on the big end you couldn't push them through the bore without canting the cap. Ah. Piston cooling got better. The cylinder head flow way better uh, than the previous engine. Mm -hmm. Overall strength of the engine. We've been with a stock uh, out of the box engine. We took an engine as shipped to the assembly line, removed all the pickup trucks stuff, put it in the dyno cell and started trying to kill it. Mm -hmm. And we've been w working on that. We, due to some defense I I engine sh stuff we had to run, we pulled it out for a while. It's going to go back in soon, though, and we'll continue to try to kill it. We're over 1,000 horsepower. On the stock bottom end, everything is stock, head bolts, gaskets, I mean, you name it. The only thing we changed was a camshaft. We're coming out with a line of, if you will, turnkey engines, ECU, everything that a guy can put into a build like this or a car if you want to. We're trying to shorten up the depth of the pan, honor the front cross members that you find in a, a lot, you know, like older Chevelles, etc. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and put this thing where nobody, nobody ever thought about putting it. The other thing we're doing is we're supercharging and liquid intercooling this one. So it's a liquid coupled intercooler core that's in the black exhaust manifold. 
our mock-up exhaust manifold. Now, That's going to be part of our program, supercharged diesel engines. And then we'll have turbocharged diesel engines, and then we'll have super turbos, which means you've got a supercharger and a turbo or two turbos. Yeah. Yeah. Possibilities. Yeah. Yeah. So we're, we're going to have a whole line from about 600 horsepower up of turn, turnkey engines. Wow. This is the first showcase of what that's all about. This is kind of like an LS, but a diesel version. Yeah. It kind of seems like you know, it. You just put, plucked a string right there. Bing! Yeah. Uh, the world has been LS to death. Yes. That's There's all I nothing hear. unique about an yeah. LS. Hot rods are self expression. Uh, and that's why I'm doing this. No one's doing it. Yeah. Well, if you buy a Duramax or most any built diesel in engine, it came out of a junkyard or a used truck to begin with. So God knows where it's been. Or mm -hmm. it, it, here, I like the idea. The guys at GM will put banks components that fit their tooling inside or on the outside of the engine in Moraine, Ohio. We've done more than 20,000 defense engines that way. Wow. Yeah. All we have to do is engineer the part with the assembly line and that tooling in mind. Our parts have to clear their assembly tooling. Yep. That's good because it'll help us keep the price down. If we get an engine, take it all apart, pull out the camshaft, you know, change the valve springs, the push rods, whatever you end up doing, the cost of the engine just went up tremendously. To get the roller tappets out, you gotta pull the heads. Mm. So you're, gonna, you're going down to the block to change the cam. Yeah. This, this is a much better uh, type of situation. So you explained a lot to me. I try not to get too invested in, you know, what this does. Yes. So I typically ask somebody, I go, is it going to go fast? You got to stop with that. Does. Exactly. Yeah. I go, is it going to go fast? I go, well, of course it's going to go fast. I go, that's all I care about. Yeah. I care about how fast it's going to go. And then I'm going to work with the suspension and the tires and brakes and make it stop really well for you. Yeah. Can we open some boxes? I'm dying to. Yeah, let's do, yeah. It. let's do it. Absolutely. So you'll notice on these 2,500, 3,500 brake kits, front and rear calipers aesthetically are the same but they're gonna be for different. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> hmm. So different piston sizes. All right. Maybe different rotor widths. Six pistons. Yeah. All right. And then they're also staggered. So we do a staggered bore so that it's such a big brake pad yep. that as the rotor is wearing the pad, the leading edge, which you've heard mm -hmm. of in racing lots of times, mm -hmm. well, in this case, the leading edge is always going to wear faster than the tail end. Yes. So what we do is we stagger with smaller pistons on the leading edge and larger at the tail end. Got it. It keeps that pad taper from happening. I have been thinking about gearing this thing for 180 miles an hour. <laughs> what you talking about, Willie? <laughs> Maybe a buck 40. I want it to haul its ass down as, as well as it builds speed, I want it to remove speed. And just looking at that caliper, ah, man, it makes me wonder what the rotors look like. But let's start with the hats. So when you guys came and visited us, you know, one thing that everybody was really checking out is that we make these out of a forging. Oh, man. So really, so the grain flow is beautiful. Real, and it machines beautifully. He was oh, looking at parts. God. Yeah. Oh, man. So super strong. Yep. Um, and you can tell how light it is. He saw blanks that yeah, was, he was, was amazed, yeah. right? Because yeah. we build all kinds of offset and, and flange thickness mm -hmm. into one blank forging. You're not removing as much parent metal. Yes. And the end product is way the hell stronger in the same alloy. Yep. But what people don't realize is that the rotor assembly, including the hat, is like a radiator. Well, you got a thermal barrier right here. That's exactly it. So people right. don't realize that. Right there. Yeah. So yeah. instead of all that heat and a steel hat like the factory mm -hmm. brake, 
getting transmitted into the steel hub mm -hmm. and then into those bearings, this is being way more efficient and keeping it a lot cooler. What about the frictional surface on a one piece versus this? I mean, both of them are really gonna- They stay straight? They, they're they still gonna work the same. Mm -hmm. It's just that, and do you have the rotor? Yes. Reggie, let's look at the rotor with it. All right. So, damn pizza right, box. Ready. Oh my oh, God. Right. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's just like a pizza. Yeah. Yeah. It's literally a pizza box. I'm gonna have the, my strong guy. Well, did DoorDash pull it out. deliver it? I mean, I'll take a couple. Check that. You can almost put your head through this thing. But it's a hell of a necklace. Yeah. Sorry, that was, I just had to do it. <laughs> I, I like it that we're geeking out on Look this stuff. Look at the size of that thing. And like that's e-coded, right? That's the uh, this is the e code for the rotors. So does the coating wear off on the friction surface? Absolutely. So uh, it has to. Yeah. Yeah. The swept area or the annulus, yep. it's all going to come off there, mm -hmm. but it's going to stay in all these other locations and especially down inside the veins. Where it usually gets rusty. And it takes a lot more temperature than zinc That was plate. my next question. Yeah. yeah. So something that we were looking at is all the surface area we have down in here. Oh yeah. So we so could have made a non-staggered directional vein. Yes. And you see how they're directional? Mm -hmm. So the direction is also giving us a lot more thermal capability to dissipate heat because mm -hmm. it's pumping it from the inside of the rotor out. It's yep. like a fan. But because we only did a staggered vein, the air hole is a lot larger volume. Yes, bigger cross section, yeah. And then a lot more volume, or a lot more surface area yes. inside. So yes. there's a lot of things in- is, is there a left hand and a right hand? Oh, absolutely. Yep, yeah. so this, this is gonna be driver's side. Gotcha. So this Rotor way. spinning this yes. way. Yes, yes. Gotcha. So the rotor going this way. Mm -hmm. um, and here's another misconception. Everybody thinks that the air is getting grabbed out here. No, this is like a pump. So yep. we're always directing air to the inside mm -hmm. and pumping it out through the exactly. veins. Exactly. I know a lot of people are probably looking at these brakes and saying it's, it's just too much. In this case, bigger is better. <laughs> a lot of guys don't realize also, especially on the jacked up trucks where you're running 40s or 44s or whatever the mechanical advantage of this stock brake system i i always look at where's the center line of this mm -hmm. radially out and where is the outside diameter of the tire yep so you've got a, a mechanical advantage or in this case with brakes it's a mechanical disadvantage you got a big lever arm out here and a short lever arm here, and it's even shorter with the stock brakes. Absolutely. So when you go to the big tires, you need more diameter on the rotor. Totally right. Dead bang. Sounds like you guys have a pickup truck program going. Is that true? Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and, and that yeah. all came from us working with the OEs for a long time. Oh yeah, so uh -huh. doing a lot of military contracts. Yes. These truck brakes, we only do this asymmetrical slotting. And here's another thing that people also don't understand, because they'll say, you know, why do you, and they call them this, why do you have these goofy slots that don't match? <laughs> what we're trying to do is the leading edge of the brake pad is mm -hmm. never off of a slot. Got it. Mm -hmm. So it's always cleaning that leading edge. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So on this set of brakes, that's super important because of the weight and yeah. what they're being used for. Yeah. In this case, because it's going to haul ass. All right, here's the, the huge oh, pedal baby. that I've been talking about. Got it. So that's our 10 to one pedal. It's one of our newer pedals. Mounting surface. So it's gonna be, if we were sitting in the truck, it'll be like this. Yep. Foot pad down here. Foot pad can get moved left to right. Got it. And then it's got a traditional balance bar on it. It's not that we need a balance bar on this truck. Mm -hmm. It's that the packaging is going to be the best and mm -hmm. a couple things. Looks pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's the stock stuff. A, a right little bit there. different, right? Yeah. We're going to have a front and rear circuit and they'll, the master cylinders mm -hmm. will be mounted on the firewall. 
right? Yep. Then with a balance bar, we can dial our front to rear bias a little bit more than... Now, do we have two different bores on the master cylinders? Or no. They're, so they're the, the same? Yeah, the calculations we came up with, the front and rear piston sizes are close enough that volume isn't mm -hmm. going to be too big of a deal. Fine tune it here. Exactly. Gotcha. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And if we need to tune it from there any further, we may change to like a 7 8 bore. Or if the on brake... the rear. Yes. Yeah. Based off of a lot of other applications that we've worked with and talking to our engineering staff, mm -hmm. one inch master cylinders with all this leverage was a real good place to start. So being a fixed mount caliper also, drum brakes work off of volume. So you need a, little, a big master cylinder. That's mm -hmm. probably why it had such a big pedal leverage, right? Yes, and it's got a big pedal leverage. Having that big master cylinder is good, but it doesn't build pressure as easy as a smaller cylinder. Mm -hmm. With a smaller cylinder, going to a disc brake that doesn't take as much volume, I think we're gonna build all, all kinds of pressure. I started looking at this truck and our race manager had come up with these new groovy lightweight, but it's not so much for the that's, weight. That's the master cylinder. This is the reservoir for I mean, them. So, I'm sorry, that's the reservoir. Yeah, right. so we're going to ditch the plastic reservoirs. We've got these nice little beauty rings. Mm -hmm. So that's what's going to be on the firewall. Oh, that's going to look sweet. That is so cool. Beautiful assembly. Two and, of those. I and mean, lightweight. Yes. I mean super lightweight. Somebody thought of what they were doing there. Um, I can tell you who did. Bill Wood. Yes, yes. Bill Wood. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, yeah. and why not? Same thing with this. When you're sitting in the cab, you look inside. Bill Wood, I hope you're doing real good, by the way. This product is beautiful. One thing that I've noticed with these C10s is when you put aftermarket pedals, you know, the factory master is pretty low. Yes. So when you put the pedal down near the kicked floorboard, mm -hmm. you end up losing a bunch of stroke yeah you're into that tapered part the the angled part of that yeah yeah so i knew that if we were going to do this what's nice is the way you guys have this set up is we can kind of go anywhere right about mm -hmm. there and that's probably right mm -hmm. huh yeah looks good and then with the drive by wire yeah you put the throttle where you want it exactly yeah, wherever it's perfect we get the cad we install it in the cad and make it real easy Make the reinforcement. Yeah. What do you think the pedal travel is going to be at the foot pad? Probably three or four inches. Okay. And then it'll, with the way it looked in here. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we're gonna get quite a bit of stroke. So yeah, right about there, we're gonna get a lot of stroke out of it. I'm loving the look of those master cylinders. The black. Brake fluid reservoirs, just trick as hell. There's a word you, you don't hear much of anymore. Beautiful. Absolutely you like it? Beautiful. I love so it. So from Bill Wood to you, Gail. Oh, man. It's Christmas in July, folks. Thank you, Bill Wood. It's deeply appreciated. You're, a, you're almost bringing a tear to my eye. Almost. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, the guys get a little busy with hood hinges, steering wheel and master cylinder bracket, drive shaft tunnel, core support bracing, supercharger inlet, air filter housings, oversized intake tubing, and this. Yeah.